So we're out here in Maricopa County in Arizona, uh, outstanding in front of the Southwest Microwave uh, test site in the middle of the desert. Um, and we're standing in front of this uh, rigid metal fence. And rigid metal fence is something that we see a lot of in the federal space or in the high security space. And it, this is a, a bit of a challenging uh, fence material. Um, one of the things that, that I wanna talk about with you today, Jeff, is that there's some myths related to how easy or difficult it is for Southwest Microwave to detect any sort of aggressor for this type of fence. Can we talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, yeah. The, the MicroPoint 2 system is, is uniquely designed uh, to be able to differentiate between some of the noise that this type of fence makes versus what a chain link fence would make. Um, a common misperception is you can just take any fence sensor and apply it to this fence, but the reality is it operates, it sounds, it, it vibrates significantly different than that chain link fence. And so with the MicroPoint 2 system, uh, because we have such a high repeatable resolution at 1.1 meters, we're able to differentiate uh, noise to, to a specific area. We calibrate our, our system based on that three foot section of fence versus other systems that may have a 10 meter resolution. And then they don't even calibrate every uh, one of their, in, their 10 meters to that section of fence. So nuisance alarms is always the, the differentiator in, in a fence detection system. And this type of fence can be a real um, a problem for a system that, that isn't able to tune that well. And there's a couple of different manufacturers of this type of fence that you hear that you have here at the test site. What are the do you, what are the couple of manufacturers that you have? Sure, uh, this is an Ameristar in-pass uh, fence. Um, we've got a couple different variations down the line here with different spacing. Some where you could have K-rated cables on there. Um, on the other side, we have some more traditional Palisades fencing um, that looks a little similar in the market. Uh, you know, Ameristar is a is a brand name and a, and a very good product, but there are a lot of other ones out there. Um, some of them no name, they just a really rigid fence that doesn't move like a chain link would do. Right, we look forward to talking next probably about the setup and how to make this work better and sense intrusion attempts. So Jeff, let's talk a little bit about calibration, how important calibration is with the MicroPoint 2 system on this rigid fence. Absolutely, Steve. Yeah, it's a, it's significantly different than how you would calibrate a chain link fence. So I've got two tools here that uh, some people may be very familiar with, our, our cut simulator tool, which this tool is designed to mimic a pair of bolt cutters actually cutting fence fabric. Okay. We use it to get repeatable uh, results when we're going through a testing process. And then just a, a stick, this is a metal pipe that on a chain link you would just drag along that fence when it was in calibration mode. Just create a noise profile and match that signal to the actual section of cable. But these are not what you would use on uh, this type of rigid fence. Okay. So in that situation, we have uh, the, the rigid fence uses, we use a rubber mallet. So instead of dragging like we do with that chain link, we're going to um, tap along every pail as we go along. Now rigid fences, depending on the level of security at the site, they may have a cable up in this top rail, they may have a cable in the bottom rail, they may have it in both. The higher security sites would have it theoretically That's the, in both. the MicroPoint 2 sensor cable. The MicroPoint 2 sensor cable, okay. absolutely, yes. And so when we would turn on calibration mode in this fence, we would take this rubber mallet and bang along the fence line all the way down and all the way back. Each picket as well as the poles themselves. Which Each is a picket. Resolution. Absolutely, yes. Because what we're doing is we want to match that sensor cable to the noise profile in that specific location. And remember, we do everything down to a 1.1 meter increment. So every, every pound, every bang, we want to, that noise profile to match that cell number. Okay. So the other tool we have is our, our cut simulator tool, it's very similar to what we just had for the chain link, except this one has a, a Delrin tip on here. And it's designed specifically, does the same thing, mimics pairs, dif different levels of bolt cutters. The first notch is a pair of 18 inch bolt cutters. The second notch mimics eight inch bolt cutters. Uh, but this tip right here allows the, uh, the uh, powder coating on this fence not to get damaged. And so we're trying to protect the aesthetics of the fence at the same time while giving that testing ability. All right, what's up next? Well, what's up next is we're gonna actually have Brad calibrate this fence for us and show us what, how it looks differently than if you were calibrating a chain link. Okay, let's go. So we're out here with Brad. We're actually gonna calibrate this Ameristar impasse fence. 
Uh, right now, we're actually plugged in locally to our processor module. Uh, with the Southwest Microwave MicroPoint 2 system, you could plug in uh, locally, or you could be at a server connected to this processor through the controller. You would just need somebody with a radio so you could communicate back and forth. But if it's more conducive uh, because of weather or other environmental issues to, to be in the server room, um, you could very well do that. So what we do in this process, Brad, is we're going to take this rubber mallet and we're in this situation going to calibrate this A cable which is running inside this uh, top channel here. And you're going to come along with this rubber mallet and in short increments, medium taps. So you're not just barely tapping it. You want to make a noise here, uh, but you're also not beating beating it up, you know, you, you don't want to kill it. And what we're doing again is we're calibrating this specific sensor cable to that section of fence. So you want to do it in short enough increments that you're not missing or creating holes in your calibration. Okay. And so you're going to go all the way along, just tapping all the way to the end, and then turn around and come all the way back to this processor. Sounds good. Are you going to show us exactly in the software how that represents? Exactly. While, you, while you're going along the line doing the actual calibration, we'll walk through the software and what it will look like, things that we'll look for, that type of situation. Perfect. Sounds good. We can see the noise profile of when he's creating that noise all the way down. It, those blue uh, spikes or peaks are the peaks of those noise. And what it's doing is, is creating that threshold level of what that fence is going to look like, that calibration along that fence line. So in this situation, uh, as I mentioned when Brad was doing it, we're only calibrating the top cable. Our fence has cable in the, both the top channel and the bottom channel. We would need to calibrate each of those cables separately. And as you see, as Brad has gotten a little bit further down the line here, you can see where that noise, those, that blue mass there, that, that's the noise he's creating. You see that calibration profile has started to uh, uh, populate there on the screen. When we get to the entire process and we hit the save calibration, the system will do a little bit of fine tuning and smooth that line out just a little bit. Um, but again, we're calibrating every, every meter of fence to its specific meter of cable. The other advantage with the Southwest Microwave MicroPoint system is that uh, this process only needs to be done once. Some systems out there require a recalibration when the weather turns cold or when it turns hot. Uh, that's not the case with our equipment. The only time you would need to recalibrate is if uh, you had a change to your fence line, um, uh, equipment might be relocated, a scenario like that, then you would need to recalibrate that section only. And you see now Brad's gotten to the end. Uh, we're not using the entire uh, 200 meters of cable here. Um, but in this situation, he's gotten to the end, he's turning around, and you'll see that blue noise profile uh, start to come back towards us. The reason we have you go down and back is to make sure just any spots where um, maybe he skipped over inadvertently, we fill in any of those holes so we have a complete calibration all the way through. And then most other systems on the market they don't calibrate uh, per meter of cable. They, their resolution could be anywhere from you know, one meter to 10 meters, depending on the system. But what they'll do is a common calibration across the whole uh, fence line or the whole set of cable. And so they'll average it out. So if you have a section of fence that's really rigid and maybe some loose spaces or uh, less rigid, the bolts aren't as tight, then you'll get uh, uh, inconsistencies in your calibration, you may have places it's easier to climb or you have places where it's uh, more nuisance alarm prone. So what I'm doing now is going to save this actual calibration profile and we'll see, now you can see on that screen where that red line shows our calibration profile that he created. 
the blue line was the peaks all the way along the line. Now the next step in this process would be to disable any cable past where we actually have active cable. And that's a different process we can talk about later. But we've now created a clear calibration profile. Looks very good. Uh, what we're looking here is a relatively straight line across. It's going to have its ups and downs, but you don't want big dips or saddles. Uh, that shows that uh, you have inconsistencies or places where uh, the cable is not responding as well, it was uh, uh, installed incorrectly, those type of things would create that. They're all fixable, um, but we've got an ideal calibration shown here. From here we would uh, continue calibrating any other cables. Uh, the next step would be to switch over to our B cable, which is in our bottom rail, and we would calibrate that process. But it's the exact, exact same step scenarios as we've just completed. So now that we've got our, our cable actually calibrated, the next step in the process would be uh, to go to the other side of the fence and do some fine tuning of this system. So Brad, now that we've completed our calibration on this fence, the next step is to begin the process of fine tuning, uh, adjusting the sensitivity for this. And to do that, we're gonna use our cut simulator tool. Jeff, why is that important? Well, with every system, fence detection system out there, the name of the game is uh, rejection of nuisance alarms. And if you remember, we created a, a profile, a calibration. Right. And that's essentially our, our sensitivity threshold. And so with most systems out there on the market, what you're looking for is a certain number of events over that red line uh, within a certain time frame to cause an alarm. So we want to make sure that when we create uh, events, A, that they exceed that line, but we want to be able to adjust that sensitivity so that it's not too low, so that we can tune out nuisance alarms. There's always that happy medium, and, and this process helps us define that happy medium. So what we're going to do is take this cut simulator tool that we talked to, talked about earlier, and we're going to put it on the second notch. And you're going to go once in the middle between every fence panel, uh, you know, between the post all the way down, and just release that into the fence to create that uh, simulation of that fence being cut. Okay, and what, again, does the second notch represent? The second notch mimics a pair of eight inch bolt cutters trying to cut more of a chain link fence fabric. For this fence, uh, that signal profile still uh, provides us a lot of detail and data regarding where that threshold setting should be. Okay. So as Brad begins here, he's gonna approach the fence using that cut simulator tool and create some uh, uh, noise profiles along this fence fabric. Uh, and as you see, you'll see these blue spikes that come up over that red line. He's going to do one strike per every what we would call fence panel, which is usually about 10 feet. It's between the, the main posts. And you'll see, you may see some noise under that red line. That's him actually uh, putting that the, where that uh, cuts him in until contacts the fence. But when he releases that strike, you'll see that that profile uh, goes above that red line. So the next step in this process is to just take a look at this, um, these peaks that are on here. And we can get a visual indication on the left side of the graph, we have their magnitude or the decibel level. Um, and the right side along the bottom, those numbers indicate the cells. The little red dots uh, indicate where an actual alarm was triggered when he did this. Now, uh, we mentioned this before, typically you would have multiple events over a threshold within an area inside of a time frame to cause an alarm, and those settings are adjustable. But for us, we're not worried about alarms, we're worried about those peaks and where to set this red line. So if I look in, at this and I take an average, it looks like most of my peaks are somewhere around 64 dB. Now I wanna be somewhere three to five dB below that for my threshold to make sure that I get all my alarms come in, but I tune out nuisance alarms. So I'm on the target location screen right now, and if I go, uh, to the configuration parameters screen. Uh, the second line down here is a threshold factor. That's actually my sensitivity settings. And you'll notice if I hit edit, I can now adjust this. Now, increasing that threshold or decreasing it is gonna move that red line. So for us, I wanna move it up maybe just a little bit. So I'm gonna, I moved it 2 dB. And if I go back to my target location screen, you can see that that red line adjusted, it moved up 2 dB. Now, I'm fairly comfortable with this. Uh, all my peaks are above the line and they're all about 4 or 5 dB and we want to be in that 3 to 5 dB range. So uh, this is probably where I would leave this system set. Um, 
we've, we've established our threshold. The next step here would to be to do some actual tests. So now that we've finished with the basic fine tuning of the system, the next step is to actually step into a testing mode. And now depending on your site, depending on the threat definition, your, your testing program may vary. Uh, but there are a couple different types of tests that we do. Uh, the one that Brad will do is he's going to use that same cut simulator tool that we've been talking about. And he'll go to a fence panel and in three different areas on that fence panel vary. Not the same spot, not even the same post, but within that you know, 10 foot section cause three events to make sure that we get an alarm. Uh, ideally, you would do this uh, randomly throughout your site to make sure you're getting alarms for every zone. Um, in some sites, you may have to do it every panel depending on the threat definition. The other thing that we'll do is we'll have Tim come and do some real tests. But when we do tests like this, we want to make sure we don't do what Tim's doing right now, which is try to test from the secure side of the facility. The reason is he's got these footholds. It's not a realistic test. So we're going to simulate and show you on screen exactly what it looks like when those tests comes through. And you would do again this various locations on the fence. But another thing to point out is that you can't simulate a climb. You can simulate a cut with a tool. You can. Uh, you can simulate other type of factors, but climbing is only done by actually climbing that fence. So as we discussed, Brad's gonna come up with that cut simulator tool, and he's gonna uh, create three strikes on the fence. And we'll see, like that first event there, you see it's well over that threshold. When we get a second one that exceeds that threshold, we'll get an alarm. You see the red dot that popped up on the bottom and the LED up top uh, showed that the A cable went into alarm. So now the next step would be Tim showing us an actual climbing attempt. Now I'm going to switch over to the B cable uh, because when Tim's going to approach, he's going to touch that bottom fence first. So he's starting his actual climb attempt and you see we've already caused an alarm. He's uh, not even halfway up this fence panel and he's got one on the B cable. Still creating lots of noise on this fence. Jeff, we've learned a lot about how to set up the Southwest Microwave MicroPoint 2 system on this rigid fence. Let's talk about now why the MicroPoint 2 system actually works better on this rigid fence than a lot of the competitors. Well, see, that's a great question. And the reason is the construction of this fence allow, causes the noise profile when you get an event here to distribute so evenly and actually so long across this fence. If, when I cause a noise here, you might hear it and feel the vibrating three, four, five fence panels down. And so the MicroPoint 2 system with, with its unique calibration and its super high uh, resolution of 1.1 meters allows us to capture that data pinpoint it to a specific location. We calibrate again to one meter of cable, one meter of fence are uniquely calibrated. A lot of those other fence sensor manufacturers do an average calibration across. So when you have noise that spreads so far across the fence, it's really hard to capture that. So we're able to get our uh, uh, location precisely and eliminate those nuisance alarms from distributed noise.